Pro Live. Nick, what exactly are police doing right now? Well, Siobhan, right now, members of the crime scene unit, as well as Lansing police officers, you can see right now, are taking pictures of the vehicles that are in this back parking lot, trying to collect any more evidence they can to figure out, Siobhan, how this happened. Now, Lansing police believe the 44-year-old man involved in this shooting was the shooter. Six News has been following this story for you. Nick Freud joins us now with what neighbors are saying about this. And Nick, what did they tell you? Well, good evening, Jane. As, as you can imagine, being any one of the neighbors inside of these Pine Street apartments, it's, it's very scary and a sad moment for them. I spoke with a neighbor who didn't want to talk to me on camera, but she did say last night she did hear two loud bangs. Wasn't sure what it was. Thought it could have been an argument. It could have been people moving furniture. When she went downstairs to find out what it was, she would learn that was gunfire. Do we know when the students will be allowed back in? Siobhan, any moment right now, Olivet fire crews are expected to head back inside Blair Hall to continue testing. It is still closed to students at this hour. Now, last night through this evening, they used 40 CO monitors to test levels throughout the building. All came back negative, but for reassurance, Olivet Dean Maria Davis tells us that she wanted another sweep through this morning before allowing those students to return to Blair Hall. This one was sent to the hospital, allegiance for minor cuts to his hands. How this happened here, we're going to show you as the semi moves out of out of the way here for us actually had was cut in half sheriff's deputies say a semi had noticed a traffic backup along 94 tried to get out of the way and jackknifed and was cut in half by a semi behind him and that's what you're seeing right now and it's unclear from lansing police and east lansing what the relationship was between the shooter and the two victims again in case you're just joining us two dead lansing police and east lansing believe one man is responsible for both of those shootings how are people feeling about the news that michigan's minimum wage will soon be going up well, Sherry, Greg, as you can imagine, those that we spoke that make minimum wage or close to it say they applaud the move, saying it's nice to have a little extra change coming their way in the years ahead. Nick Farrow is with the governor's campaign, and what is the mood there right now, Nick? Well, Jane, that's right. We just spoke with Governor Snyder, who said there's no doubt in his mind that over the last four years, Michigan is a different place, a different state than when he took office. Explosions rock a mid-Michigan mobile home and a neighborhood. It's breaking news and it's our top story tonight. Can you tell us tonight? And Greg Sherry, that is right. As you can see behind me right now, five departments are working to still put out some smoke and some embers. They say are still here at the scene. Departments from East Lansing, Meridian Township, Leroy, as well as the Ingham County Emergency Response Team trying to figure out what caused this. They say it was an explosion of some sort. I spoke with Meridian Township Fire Chief Fred Culver, who told me that he could hear this as far as a mile away at his home. He spoke to that homeowner. Is he confident those lights will come back on this New Year's Eve? Well, Greg, as you might expect, doubtful at this point. That homeowner said, look, the last 10 days has been very hectic. Nick, how did fans react to this whole thing? Well, guys, really, it was a back and forth emotion. First, when those evacuations sounded, there was a PA system announcement to take shelter, that there would be a half hour delay for every lightning strike. Morning to you, Siobhan and Evan. We're going to start this 2014 school year with a little bit of math. Get your pen and paper ready. 244 traffic arm violations last year here in Grand Ledge. Now, they helped catch some of those people by new technology, having double stop arms out here in Grand Ledge instead of the traditional one, as well as a stop sign in the back of the bus. 244 stop arm violations that bus drivers could report because of technology. There's actually cameras around the bus. Why is the complex hoping to get this license? Really, they say it's a matter of being competitive with other sports complexes across the state, which is why Mid-Michigan Sports Turf LLC says they need this license. Uh, if you say me, you know, if you save me a spot in line, I'd love that, Nick. Well, show me. I'll, I'll try to do my best to go ahead and hop in line. I think I should be able to get something for you. You go ahead and throw me a list and I'll, I'll send it back your way. I will do that. Thank